in comparison to you. So today, Lord, would you fill us with your spirit and give us fresh insight, fresh strength, and help us to walk as close to you as we possibly can because in your presence is fullness of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You wanna start it? Yes. Okay, so I was reading this morning. I've been reading in Second Kings, and um, just... He, Elisha constantly filled with the Holy Spirit and just seeing incredible miracles. And it's just really <clears throat> been comforting my heart as I listen to the news and read articles and see posts. And um, I have been so encouraged that no, despite whatever surrounds us, the, the impossible situations that surround us in our nation and is presenting itself to the entire world we serve the God who is in charge of everything and he has a plan and he is aware of what's going on and in his presence like Garrett prayed is fullness of joy and his fullness of peace and it has just realigned my heart and my mind every single morning as I just submerge myself in the word of God that this is the same God that did miracles in the past that we serve today he is the same God that protects his people he is the same God that is with us in our present time of need he is the same God that walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death and he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies this is that table right now people this is that feeding our soul encouragement strength peace that passes understanding in the midst of chaos he prepares this table before us for us to be encouraged and to strengthen our soul so um, i was in second kings um there's so much that's so good but i really so wanted before to bethany reads that you Sorry, know the ahead. difference between men and women she loves this story i love the story where that knucklehead said they're not going to be any food next day, the captain and the... No, this and, is it. Uh, no, this is it. Elisha. I was going to start there. I was going to start oh, there. Oh, you were? Yes. Okay. I love it. The guy gets trampled. He de defies God's prophet and then gets trampled. But that's me. I like that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's just read it. All right? Um, so the king... So I guess we'll just start earlier. There was like a few different things that I wanted to touch on, but... Okay, so the Siege of Samaria. Um, it's Second Kings chapter 6, verse 24. Sometime later, King Ben-Hadad of Aram brought all his military units together, and they marched up and laid siege to Samaria. There was such a severe famine in Samaria, and they continued the siege un against it until a donkey's head sold for 34 ounces of silver and a cup of dove's dung sold for two ounces of silver. If you barbecue dove's dung, it's pretty good. Or you can mix it in with your pasta. And think about that, like just the, oh my gosh, can you even, the craziness that we're facing today doesn't even compare to what they were facing. It's Not so crazy. Not even close. People were starving to death, and, eat, and eat, they even reading their own. Oh, yeah, it goes into own, that, which is beyond. We don't even talk about that. I can't even handle it. Verse 26. No. Oh, go on, big Buckethead. puppy. Big dorky go on. puppy just go on. knocked the computer. Outside. Go on. Outside, Ragnar. Go on. Ragnar, out. Go play. Go boy. Sorry, go play, Ragnar. Outside. Out. Outside. Okay, verse 26. As the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him, My lord, the king, help. He answered, If the lord doesn't help you, where can I get help for you? From the fleshing... Uh, the... <laughs> the threshing floor or the wine press. Then the king asked her, what's the matter? And she said, this woman said to me, give up your son and we'll eat him today. And then tomorrow we'll eat my son. So we boiled my son and we ate him. And I said to her the next day, give up your son and we will eat him. But she hid her son. When the king heard the woman's words, he tore his clothes. Then as he was passing by on the wall, the people saw that there was sackcloth under his clothes next to his skin. He announced, May God punish me and do so severely if the head of Elisha, son of Shaphat, remains on his shoulders today. But Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him, and the king sent a man ahead of him. But, there the, but before the messenger got to him, Elisha said to the elders, Do you see how this murderer has sent someone to remove my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door to keep him out. Isn't the sound of his master's feet behind him? 
While Elisha was still speaking with him, the messenger came down to him. Then he said, This disaster is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Elisha replied, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, at Samaria's gate, six quarts of fine flour will sell for half an ounce of silver, and twelve quarts of barley will sell for half an ounce of silver. Then... <laughs> I can't. Then the captain, the king's right-hand man, responded to the man and said, Look, even if the Lord were to make the windows of heaven open, could this really even happen? But Elisha announced, In fact, it will happen, but you will see it, and because of your doubt, you will not taste it. So there's a couple of lepers sitting at the city gate, and they finally come to the conclusion, We're going to die anyhow. If we go into the city, we're going to die. And if we go out and go into the camp like there's a possibility that they'll feed us they'll have grace upon us but if not they're going to kill us and we're going to die it doesn't really matter we're going to die somehow so we might as well go into the camp so they go into the enemy's camp and the camp is completely empty there are no soldiers there and they're like blown away by this so they start hoarding all the stuff and then they start getting convicted they're like wait a second this is a, such an incredible miracle we have to tell the whole city we can't just take all this for ourselves we have to share this so they go into the city and they tell the king and his household and they hardly believe him and they're like no they must be waiting they're like gonna they're waiting in the in the fields around us they're waiting in the hill country and they're gonna come out and attack us and kill us all if we go into their camp so they they sent out some chariots to go see if the army had really indeed left. Well, the armies of heaven had come down in the middle of the night. And this great army that was uh, had been laying siege to the city, this huge army, they had no reason to fear. God had struck them with terror. And they had heard chariots and horsemen. And they were so intimidated that they That's left That's what we should pray everything. in this country right now and the enemies of God right now. Right? That they should have, somehow God should send his holy terror on the nation of, of the United States for the God haters and, and bring them to their knees yeah. and in repentance. I mean, I would love to see revival personally. I mean, it would be so amazing that God would pour his uh, spirit out in every country of the world and people in communist China would come to know Jesus Christ, in Sophie's on, in Iran that a revival would happen and people would come to know Jesus Christ. In the United States, a revival would happen and people would come to Jesus Christ. That would be that 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 would be amazing. And, and I believe in the last days God's gonna pour out his spirit and there's gonna be a huge harvest. So But just how encouraging that they're faced with all of these soldiers around them. They can't even eat food. There's nothing left and then God. Then God comes in. But the crazy thing they is... They were totally empty of themselves. They had completely. no resources. They were done. Absolutely done. Absolutely done. But God sent mm. an army and delivered them. And then the, the one guy, the servant who said, this isn't even possible. Like God, if he even opened up a window in heaven, this couldn't even happen. So he was standing at the city gate. And that was what Garrett was saying. He's standing there at the city gate the watching everybody go into the camps and come back with their arms laden with food and silver and all these treasures. And he actually gets trampled by all of the people and dies. So... Don't doubt God. Don't doubt his ability to come But that's not even through. where we were going this morning. <laughs> it wasn't. We were no. going on the providence so, of God and the provision of God. So the then providence and the provision. Providence, it ends there, provision. Go. And then it goes to the Shulamite woman. And it's so cool because in chapter 8, um, Elisha is talking to the Shulamite woman. If you have... Um, if you've read, if you haven't read Second Kings, you have to. It is so exciting. So the Shulamite woman, um, Elisha had been traveling, and her and her husband had compassion on him and said, "You need a place to stop and stay. So we're going to build a house for you. We're going to build a room for you in our house. And anytime you're passing by, it's yours. You just come up and you stay there as long as you need to, and whatever." So he comes and he stays, and he's like, "Well, you're being so generous. You're." You're being so kind. What can I do for you in return? And they're like, we're good. We just want to serve you. And he's like, no, you need a child. You are along in years. You should have a child to celebrate life with. So he prays and he says, next time this next year, uh, this time next year, God's going to give you a child. So he does. And then the child grows up and then the child gets sick and or has a headache and then falls down dead. And she puts the child in his bed and goes and gets him and says, 
I didn't even ask for this child and you prayed and God gave us this child and now this child is dead or sleeping. They refer to it as sleeping. You have to come do something. So Elisha comes back and it's a cool story. You should read it. He lays on the child and he prays for the child. And Three finally, times. Finally, God brings this child back to life. And so it's the same woman. So he is staying with them again years later. And he says, there's going to be a famine that comes on this country. And you should get out of town for this. So they go and it says, go and live as resident aliens in another country. So they go and they live among the Philistines. And as they're living among the Philistines, this famine is just wrecking havoc on the land. So after seven years, they come back. She goes to the king to get her land back, to get her home back. And this is so cool. The Elisha servant has been called in by the king. And the king is saying, tell me about Elisha. Who is this guy? I need to know more about him. So as he's telling him the miracles that Elijah has been uh, a part of and, and performed, he's mentioning the Shulamite woman and her son and this resurrection story. And who could it be? In walks the Shulamite woman that very second. So she comes in and the servant says, hey, this is the woman that let, I was just let, telling let, you Let me about. Read, read it right here. It says, while he was telling the king how Elisha restored the dead son to life, the woman whose son he had restored to life came to appeal to the king for her house and field. So Gehazi said, my lord, the king, this is the woman and this is the son, Elijah, restored to life. When the king asked the woman, she told him the story. So the king appointed a court official for her saying, restore all that was hers along with all the income from the field from the day she left the country until now. What in the world? I mean, so... Oh, my goodness. Talk about the providence of God, right? I mean, the providence of God and the pr provision of God and the protection of God. All three, the three Ps, right? Providence, provision, protection. But As it's so cool because it would not... It all the started... Timing, the it, timing providentially was amazing. But it all started with... She recognized, here's a man of God and we can, we can help him. We can meet a need that he has by building a bedroom for him. That's right. So yeah, so she was living sent in a modern term, right? right? She was living for the gospel. She was laying down her resources. She built him a room. Her time, she built him a room and invited him into the home, right? Took and her treasures and her, ta and her talents uh, offered to the man of God, to God's man, and boom. Right. Look at all the ways that God, per recognizing her heart's desire, recognizing their physical needs, taking care of them constantly, and just the whole, the whole story just blew me away. So I wanted to share it with you guys all today because it was so encouraging to me in light of this nation, of this world in crisis right now. This is the same God we serve. That same God who did that is the same one we serve today. So it it's Second Kings, Kings, Second Kings, <laughs> Second Kings, six, seven, and eight. I encourage you to go back and read over it uh, and really check it out. But here, here's the thing: God is a providential God. He He brings people into our lives. He brings uh, situations into our life where, where God's calling us and saying, hey, look, here's a man of God. Here's a homeless man. Here's a hungry man. Here's a, a, a somebody needing rest. And he's saying, what are you going to do about it, Garrett? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to are you going to lay down your life and, and get out of your comfort zone and get out of, uh, well, you know, um, I don't you know, I don't want to open up a room to anybody or I don't want to uh, give up my time, treasures and talents for the gospel. You know, I'm pretty comfortable and. Man, God's calling us to something greater, especially in this shaken up, broken world. Everything right now is nuts. And we have an opportunity to say, hey, this isn't the way, okay? This isn't the way. Uh, you know, you don't want to be an accountant that's a Christian. You want to be a Christian that's an accountant. And on and on it goes. I don't care what it is. You don't want to be, I mean, I even know pastors that are pastors and then Christians instead of Christians and pastors. So whatever it may be, man, we need to walk the walk and talk the talk, guys. We serve a providential God. I mean, what is the, t the timing? Why, the woman walks in right when Gehazi's in there? Really? So rad. I mean, that's so rad, right? And he's like, 
Whoa! I, I mean, in the king, I mean, the king could not deny the providence of God. And through, so, so notice this. Her walking in was the providence of God, and it was supernatural. But the provision of God was from a man who saw the miracle of God through the providence of God, who then said, hey, we got to help this woman. And so be looking around, guys, okay? God can show you something. He might be saying, hey, help this person, love this person, uh, do this, do that, whatever it may be. Guys, be watching, be listening, and be, and be uh, uh, dealing with people, live sent. Remember, you are known and loved, and God bless. Babe, pray us out. Father, I just thank you so much that you promise to take care of us, Lord, if all we have to do is just draw near to you, Lord, and you will provide for us. Um, Lord, you do provide for us physically, but I thank you so much that you meet us in the depths of our soul, Lord, where we are truly hungry. Lord, you feed us in the presence of our enemies. You take care of us. God, I thank you for your peace that you promise us in times where there is chaos all around us, but Lord, you you truly do give us peace that passes understanding, that will guard our hearts and minds as we set our eyes on Christ Jesus. Lord, thank you for your word that is such an encouragement to my soul. Lord, thank you for these people that desire to know you more. God, would you empower them richly to go out and proclaim freedom and hope to the lost and the dying, Lord. God, we're so excited that we get to proclaim your the hope of heaven with you for eternity. So God, be with my brothers and sisters today. Go with them. And Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.